Hey everyone, my name is Patrick Rukowski. I'm a software engineer, a full stack engineer at uh, Lockheed Martin. Um, so I'm, right now I'm a product architect in our software factory, which is um, responsible for driving DevSecOps adoption um, throughout the company. So we push down uh, a lot of uh, different tools and services for programs um, and develop or um, the delivery teams to ingest and, and leverage to make their, their lives easier. Uh, so quickly going to run through the agenda real quick. Um, going to have a quick intro. There's been a couple of different presentations already on, on sort of supply chain security and kind of where it stands today. Um, so make it quick. Uh, some of our initial goals when it comes to from an enterprise level, uh, what we were after. Um, the implementation that we're currently working towards, uh, some of the spe specifications and tooling that we're using. Um, and then I'll quickly run through a demo. Um, ma mainly, it's mainly a really just a walkthrough, so I'm not staring at slides this whole time. So let's get started. Um, so I think most people, uh, you know, have some general idea of what a secure supply chain kind of is. And here's a clear definition: being a set of processes used to deliver software to production, including all its dependencies. That's a big part of it: uh, securely, reliably, and consistency. Uh, with with regular updates, um, so if we if we try to break that down a little bit more, uh, we look at uh, three big qualities in a given software component: the providence, pedigree, and integrity. Uh, so with providence, we're looking for a component record of of existence, sort of that that medical record um, for a given piece of software. The pedigree, um, which is the quality, and it's that of the components and ingredient. Really, it's the ingredient list. Uh, and then integrity. Um, can you trust the software? Um, has it been compromised? Um, so uh, switching into sort of the kind of why we're here today, um, obviously there's been a quite a few uh, supply chain hacks um, more recently uh, that drove the government to uh, put out um, quite a few different document, uh, documents and um, executive orders uh, on uh, improving the nation's uh, cybersecurity. Um, and with, with the uh, executive order, we have an emphasis, a really big emphasis on SBOMs. But um, additional to that, and a lot of what we're focusing on uh, is, is the attesting piece to secure software um, development practices and the integrity and providence on a, on a given piece of software that we're delivering. Um, so some addition, additional pieces that are out there, the White House, uh, national uh, cybersecurity strategy. Um, you'll see SBOMs all over the place. Um, and and they are important, but our, we're shifting sort of towards the SBOM attestation piece um, more specifically. Cool. And so, sort of, uh, I guess the, we have the government kind of putting, down, putting out the literature um, and, and kind of driving our focus. Um, I, I think a big, this was coming to an end or a tail or, whatever you want to call it, um, regardless, given the consumption of open source all over the place, it's used everywhere. Um, and, it, and it makes sense. It's, you know, it drives down cost um, make, uh, with definitely maintaining any, any of your own code. Um, so it, it definitely is a huge, huge uh, uh, increase in productivity, uh, leveraging a lot of what's out there already. Uh, but with that come risk. And so um, these are just some of the stats that you'll see uh, from from GitHub and Synopsys and um, Sonotype, like state of the software supply chain. Um, so it's just this is just kind of just proving that, hey, it's everywhere. Now we, we really should be doing something about it. Uh, so like the uh, requi required qualities that I mentioned uh, previously, providence, pedigree, and integrity, um, this is sort of the breakdown of what we're, what we're after for each of these pieces. Uh, and we've heard a lot about them before, but attestations or that metadata, that, that record um, for, for a given piece of software. Uh, there's another piece to that, which is self-attestations for when you, when you have to actually deliver software um, to the government. There's, there's going to be a form to fill out. And they can, these two, attestation and self-attestation, can kind of go hand in hand with that. Uh, the attestation piece is going to be that, 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 that um, body of evidence that you can provide uh, so that when you do sign off on, on given deliveries, uh, you'll, be, you'll be good to go. Um, pedigrees, SBOMs, again, I've heard them all over uh, today, especially. 
Uh, but it's that complete list of, uh, of your software deliverable. Um, integrity, so the focus here is around the, the build environments, um, the, the signatures, digital signatures, and transparency ledgers. A big part of it for us, at least at the enterprise level, is, is making sure everything's transparent for uh, all of our downstream uh, programs. Um, so they can easily pull something in and, and verify it, um, sort of um, where, where it came in and when and so forth onto, onto the system. All right, so just run through some initial goals. So coming from the software factory, uh, we, we, today we provide pipelines, so we're heavy in GitLab. So we provide pipelines to downstream users to easily get up and running in terms of building, deploying. Um, all of that sort of come, comes for free uh, when they just import some, one of our pipelines. So um, we needed to provide a solution to generate SBOMs as a part of that. So for a given piece of software that we're building, um, uh, making sure that they can easily just incorporate it into their own pipelines, how they, how they exist today. Um, provide providence, and this is a big one, provide providence and uh, sign open source software enter, entering the inter internet. Um, so we're working towards uh, getting the, making sure that we can prove out when, when things come out onto the internet and going through various scans and you know, the various validation processes um, that, that we can prove out uh, all of our open source software that comes through. Um, and then off, uh, and lastly is as we provide the provenance and sign, uh, we're enabling the teams to easily sign their own internal software and generate provenance um, from, from the form, in the form of attestations uh, downstream. All right, so, so, so some of the initial goals. So I kind of hinted at it, but basically, uh, Really, the software SBOM generation from our standpoint is, is going to be an additional pipeline that end, end programs can incorporate to help generate um, a lot of their, their SBOMs for, for mostly for free. Um, obviously, there are some exceptions to that, like legacy, um, depending on what package managers you're leveraging and uh, what source. Um, but uh, implement generalized signing infrastructure. Um, so this, for this, we have actually stood up uh, internally Sigstore, uh, which is a, a product suite of Fulcio, Recore, um, and you leverage Cosign to inter interact with that. So that, that's your signing piece that you can you know, sign artifacts or images. So we've stood that up internally. Um, that'll be a part of my, my kind of walkthrough later for external purposes. Uh, sign and attest to container images and, and false packages. This is what I've, what I was mentioning. Um, basically, our existing processes plugging in there as software gets pulled through proxies and um, performing the evaluation and determining signing or providing uh, attestations or generating attest attestations from that. Um, so the signing, uh, signing tamper resistant ledgers is Recore. An attestation storage mechanism. We're leveraging Testify Sec. Uh, they're, they have a tool called Archivista, so we'll get into that a little bit later as well. Um, and then at the end of the day, we need to be able to collect all of this uh, signature and attestations, and, and provide a body, body of evidence for for the self-attestation requirements. So um, that's sort of what we're working towards: is collecting all of this information, um, and then generating policy around it so that we can, we can provide it to our customers. All right, so hopefully, all right, cool. Um, just a quick diagram to run through here is um, as, as software comes onto our, our internet um, through the various proxy caches that we have set up, um, it's kind of tying into those pieces uh, for you know, registries or, or repos and uh, kind of performing our validation or our our um, trusting, if you would, um, process uh, there. And then that gets provided out as, a, as the attestation for, for kind of what kind of validation we're doing. And then signatures are deployed to ReCore. Um, so that downstream, whether it's in GitLab or wherever, we can then do validation. Um, the part of this would be that also the interaction within GitLab is where a lot of the, the tools and um, services that are uh, being delivered can then uh, pick in uh, or pull in those the archivist and recore attestations and signatures and then um, 
do do their own validation, internal validation against, or and or sign their own code and, and publish that out, um, and and generate providence. So that's sort of the workflow as things come in. Uh, work's being done to perform validation um, as it enters the internet, and then uh, downstream users can then just leverage that. So uh, going through this, this is some of the specifications and tooling that we're leveraging. Uh, so all of our attestations were, and we're heavily involved with Intoto. Uh, so the, it's a specification for providing um, attestations, whether it's centered around build uh, um, information or if it's the uh, uh, MR process, testing, all of that is a piece of this body of evidence that we're, that we're looking to provide. Um, from there is Cyclone DX. Um, that's our SBOM. That's what we've kind of sent around in, in terms of our SBOM standard. Uh, and then Salsa for any build environment stuff. And that's really kind of leveraging GitLab. Um, for, for, like I mentioned, for a lot of our signature uh, pieces, we're looking at uh, Sigstore for Fulcio, for CA. And, and Recore for, for storing. Um, there's some integration work with Scorecard, uh, so OpenSSF Scorecard, uh, which is a sort of a, um, and it evaluates your, your given repo on, on security vulnerabilities and, and so forth, and gives, gives, gives you a score in the state of the, your repo. Um, so that's, that's kind of getting tied back into our, our, our GitLab environment. Um, Another partnership we have is with TestifySec, with Witness. Uh, Witness is the, the mechanism that we're leveraging to generate these attestations and the providence. Uh, and then Archivista is that, that storage or that store uh, for, for all of those attestations. Uh, Trivia and SIFT can be used for generating um, SBOMs. And then obviously GitLab and GitHub for CI CD purposes. Um, lastly, we have an open source um, product called Hopper, which is a um, framework for defining and validating transferring dependencies between environments. So it leverages the SBOM as that, as that, um, that standard to get dependencies or, and products and uh, your, your, uh, really your deliverable software and uh, providing it um, you know, a manifest and then pointing at different SBOMs. That, that'll be your complete. Um, and then uh, ability to disconnect or go into disconnected environments. So there's a, it's a plug-in architecture. So you, there's a lot of um, plugins, like I mentioned, the scorecard that's all out of the box today. You can leverage um, performing evaluations on any of the given uh, open source software that you're, that you're leveraging. Um, there's another tool that I'm going to show off here in a second. Uh, well, I'll show the repo. But basically, it's called HopperCop, which um, Leverages four different vulnerability databases, Gymnasium, um, Trivi, uh, Gripe, and OSS Index to perform evaluations on an SBOM. Uh, so it's a collection of vulnerability data that you can provide, and um, you can basically annotate on the, on the SBOM itself. So um, that kind of covers Hopper in a nutshell, but it's, uh, feel free to go check it out. It's hopper.dev. All right, so let me just run through the walkthrough real quick. Looks like it's uh, not sharing. <laughs> I just plugged in again. Cool. Thanks. 
So this is a repo for that uh, Hopper Cop. Uh, what I'm trying to sh what I'm going to show here is how we leverage Witness, um, how how it runs and and how it exports its attestation and providence creation um, out to Archivista, which is its data store, um, and uh, also performing a signing event with Cosign, leveraging Fulcio. Um, this is all publicly available um, services that you can sort of just use today out of the box. Um, so I'll show a little bit of what what happens. Um, and it's, it's really just, Witness is really just a wrapper for uh, any kind of commands that you run. Um, you, can, you, you can add it in, you provide, they call them a tester, so different uh, processes run um, depending on where you're running from in terms of um, CI CD environments. And, and then that'll collect that data and publish it into the attestation for you. Um, so then downstream, you can write policy against, and I have an example of all of, all of this. Um, so. Let's dig in here. So quickly just looking at it, um, this is just the simple Python CLI uh, that we're leveraging poetry. Um, but basically, you, you wrap the poetry build uh, with a witness run, and then this is that testers, git, GitLab. Um, you provide it a step, what's, what, what's happening, and then, and then it's basically enabling it, um, archivist to uh, let, point it towards Fulcio, so it signs the attestation with Fulcio, um, and providing a uh, timestamp server, because Fulcio, all the certs are uh, sh short time to live, so they only live for 10 minutes as they get generated. Um, so that's, it's fairly straightforward to just incorporate, so it's just a, you know, install and then run. Um, and then downstream here, you got a cosine sign blob, of, of a given, uh, this is just for this purposes, it's the wheel file that, that we're outputting from the build. Um, so I have another example of, of where we're leveraging it with uh, when we build a Docker image, for example. Um, oh, sorry, so this is the publish. So this is just the signing event that's on the publish of, a, of an image. So it, you can sign images or, or blobs. Um, so this is the pipeline. See it run real quick. So this is the attestation run. You see it's starting. It's uh, built in in testers, um, and then you'll see it. It's start. It's stored in Archivista, and then you can see the output of the signature. Uh, so this is the cert. And then it's entry into ReCore. So this is all in the public ReCore uh, instance. Um, let's see here. It's same deal for uh, building an image. Um, oops, sorry. This is the image publish and the signing. So. Um, this is sort of the output. We'll have a build attestation here um, and, and the bundle for cosign. Um, for, that's necessary for artifacts, so in order for you to do a verification, you can either leverage a cosign bundle or the public key insert, or um, for images, it's all stored in the registry, so it's not necessary. Um, but here's an example of what a recore entry. So you perform the signing event uh, the signature is published out uh, for ingesting uh, later on downstream. Um, just an example of some of the metadata that gets pulled from GitLab, for example. Uh, this was just leveraging GitLab's internal uh, ID token. Um, so they provide an ID token in a given runner, and um, you can just leverage that and publish it to Fulcio to get your cert. So basically, um, you get a bunch of metadata. Um, for, for this, and it includes the um, di digital signature as well um, down here. I just wanted to show, I mean, it's, it's a mess, but here's a, an example of what the attestation will look like in code it. But uh, um, you can see there's quite a bit of data here, but we can easily just show, uh, have an example here of, of it broken down. So it gives you, uh, 
information in this example about the Git, the Git repo, uh, the GitLab instance that you're running on, and the environment, um, and then additionally material. So all of all of the, the files and, and uh, everything accounted for in the given repo is all included here. Um, so that down, so downstream you can write a policy against how a given software product was built um, or tested. Um, this is kind of the straightforward example. Um, so as an example of what the policy looks like, let's get that open. So basically, all I'm looking for here is that it includes the testers that I was expecting, and then uh, from a Falsio perspective, that the URI matches um, the the signing uh, party from the from the metadata perspective. But you can you can dig into this more, obviously, with make it as really as granular as you need it to be from each of the different pieces of metadata that you're that you're collecting from from the attestation generation. So just want to show quickly what a verify might look like. So cosine verify, uh, pointing at the image, and then what your expected identity for a certificate is, and then the issuer, which is GitLab. And then uh, for attestation, so you can, since I was publishing to Archivista, you can verify with, with Archivista, the attestation store. Um, or you can uh, verify with a local attestation. Uh, so I'm doing both here. So um, I grab the artifact from the output of the build and then perform a verification on that artifact with, with the attestation. Basically, with uh, Archivista, it does a lookup on the, the shell of the, of the artifact that you're trying to verify, and then that's how it finds the, uh, the given attestation. Um, so yeah, real quick, I'll show it running. So it's it's uh, not a whole lot to look like other than you see that it's good. So given that policy that was generated for an attestation, um, it successfully verified against the policy that was written. Um, so and same for cosine um, does a verify and it provides you back with the uh, additional information on on the given. Uh, image that you signed. So that's kind of a walkthrough of signing to uh, verifying. Um, and it, like I mentioned, this is kind of that second part of, of our, what of our kind of our goals are, is providing the end user programs to, to leverage these, these pipelines so that they can, out of the box, not have to think about, um, or they don't have to worry about any, about any of this. It's kind of set up behind the scenes for them um, with the infrastructure and everything. So. Um, this is that internal signing and, and, and publishing of attestations and, um, and signature uh, workflow. But yeah, it's all I have. Let's see if uh, this will work. I will open it up for any questions. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to jump on a mic. Um, but let's hear it. Hi, thanks you very much for the uh, for the talk. I was wondering, you were talking about kind of like internal and external, and so what you showed was it seems to be the external, external. opera stuff and stuff like that. And so you have all this kind of replicated internally as well, like with your own yeah. local Git, GitLab uh, installation, and and your you said you had your own deployment of the six door stack and all that sort of stuff as well. Yep. Yeah, so we we have our own internal GitLab, and we have um, we have internal uh, six store products. So Fulcio, the CA, Recore, we stood those up internally. We stood up the Archivista um, storage mechanism um, for for attestations. So yeah, all that stuff's replicated for internal uh, use. And is that so? If you're using that to kind of sign and verify internally, how do you 
when you're delivering a product to say the US government, how do you then communicate that to them if it's all sort of stored on your internet? So they're still provided. Uh, the, so the body of evidence gets collected uh, from those internal um, processes and still is delivered as a part of the delivery mechanism for any piece of software. And so it's just sort of like a tarball that you deliver with the software itself? Could be, yeah. Thanks. Cool. Any other questions? All right. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it.